All right, so what we're gonna do next is talk about how to take everybody's uh, favorite thing, word problems, and do some systems of equations with them. So I've written out for you a series of word problems, and I just gave you copies of them so you wouldn't have to write down the actual problems. Um, so basically what we're gonna do is take these sentences and convert them into equations that we can solve, okay? So the big thing to take in, uh, into account here is that the word is means equals. So when you see the word is, that's where you're gonna drop your equal sign. And your variables will vary from problem to problem, but usually it's when you see like a number, the number, a number, one number, that's generally where you put your variables. So the first couple of problems we're gonna do are systems in two variables, which means we'll have an X and a Y for each one. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's start off with this one. It says one number is, so one number is gonna be a variable. We'll call that X. Okay, next is means equals. Now here's the part that's a little tricky. Five less than does not mean five minus. What does five less than mean? Yeah, it's minus five, good. And you already said the next part, a second number, that's our second variable. So equation number one is x equals y minus five. Okay, let's do our second equation. Twice the second number. So the second number, what was the variable we used for the second number? So that twice the second number, is gonna be 2y is 2 less than yeah, 5 times the first. The first is the one that we called x. So 5 times the first is 5x, and it's 2 less than that. So equation number 2 is 2y equals 5x minus 2. Now once you have those two equations set up, we're just going to solve them. So it'll be x equals y minus 5, and 2y equals 5x minus 2. Now, of the three methods that we learned for how to solve systems of equations, uh, which one do you think makes the most sense with this particular set of equations? Graphing, substitution, or addition? Right. Well, they're not lined up. The x's, y's, equals, constants are not lined up, so I'd say not addition. They're also not both in slope-intercept form. They're not y equals mx plus b, so I'd say not graphing. So that leaves us with substitution, and it turns out substitution is pretty easy because this first one already has a variable isolated. So I'm going to take this second equation here, and I'm going to replace the x with y minus 5. So I'm going to do 2y equals 5, and instead of times x, I'm going to replace or substitute the x with the y minus 5 minus 2. We've got a little bit of algebra to do here, but it's not that bad because all that's left in the problem is uh, y's. So 2y equals 5y minus 25 minus 2. Right, let's go ahead and combine our like terms, these two right here. So 2y equals 5y minus 27 Now what? Hmm. 
That seems like a good idea. Let's subtract 5y on both sides. So we get negative 3y equals negative 27. Divide by negative 3. So we get y equals 9. Great. Now what? Yep. I want to know what x is, so let's take this equation. x equals y, which was 9, minus 5. Well, that's pretty easy. x equals 4. So, uh, what were the two numbers? There we go. Any questions on that one? Yeah, that's a substitution method. Okay, let's move on to something a little more challenging. Let's take a look at the next question. So two trucks leave a city and head in the same direction. One truck is traveling faster than the other, right? After seven hours, the faster truck is 56 miles ahead of the slower truck. And the slower truck has gone 301 miles. What's the speed of the trucks? So if I told you I went for a drive earlier today, I drove 120 miles, and it took me two hours. How fast was I going? Distance That's exactly right. Speed is distance divided by time. Do we have that information for either of the two trucks? Yes. Which one? For the one that got the 301 miles. Right? Exactly right. The slow truck. We know that the slow truck went 301 miles in seven hours. So 301 divided by seven will tell me the speed of the slow truck. I think it's 43. That seem all right? So, um, how am I going to figure out the size of the other truck? Okay. He was traveling one hundred and fifty-six miles ahead. He was fifty-six miles ahead after seven hours. So we can still figure out his distance, can't we? We know it took him seven hours. How far did he travel in seven hours? Minus the 56? He was ahead of him. So if the slow guy went 301, there you go, plus 56, he went 56 more miles. He was 56 miles ahead. So 357 over 7. Three fifty-seven divided by seven is fifty-one. Fifty-one miles an hour. What was the speed? There we go. Now, maybe you're looking at that problem thinking, um, 
how is this system of equations? We didn't use any equations really at all. Yeah, we did. We did use equations. What were our two variables in this equation? Slow yeah, slow truck speed and fast trucks speed. So we didn't call them X and Y. We called them slow truck and fast truck, but we did it. Yeah. One of the benefits of word problems is sometimes it's a little easier just to think things through logically rather than to try to write a math equation, although math equations will work. Okay. Let's talk about going into business for yourself. You've got two functions here, c of x and r of x are the two functions. C of x and r of x. Um, c of x is the cost function. It's how much the thing you're selling costs you to make, and the function there is 95x plus 1100. An example of an equation that might, uh, or a situation that might cause that equation would be something like, I have decided to uh, manufacture headphones. The machine that actually makes them costs me $1,100, and then the materials are $95 per pair of headphones. So that's how much it costs me to make a pair. It costs me $95 for each one, plus the machine was a one-time purchase of $1,100. Okay, here's my revenue function, 105x. What does that mean, like in English? Per, unit? yeah, per thing I sell, right? So I'm selling things for $95 a piece, or sorry, I'm building things for $95 a piece, and I'm selling them for $105 a piece. So you might think, oh, you're making $10 profit per item, but that's not true because I still have to pay for the actual machine that's making the product, right? So I do not break even the first time I sell something. If I sell one of these things, if I sell one pair of headphones, I've made $105, but it cost me $1,195 to make it. So you would have to... I'm like over $1,000 in the hole if I only sell one of these things. So the question is, how many things do you have to sell to break even? What does break even mean? Exactly right. I, the amount of money I have made and the amount of money I have spent are the same. So the amount of money I have made, revenue, and the amount of money I've spent, cost, are the same. Okay, how do I solve this? Work out the X's. Yep, subtract the X's. That's a good plan. So that gives me 10X equals 1100. Divide by 10, good. Dividing by 10 is really easy, just lop off a zero. So, how many things do I have to sell to break even? 110, which means when I sell my 111th pair of headphones, I make 10 bucks. Volume is important. If I could sell a million pairs of headphones, I'd be in good shape. Hmm. Or do break it and come back and buy more. That'd be great. Let's try another one. Let's try one with decimals. Now this is um, a business where you're not making, let's say you're not making the most high-end products ever. Because in this cost and revenue function, how much am I actually spending to make each thing? 30 cents per. Yeah, $0.30 cents per. The machine is more expensive. It's a $1,400 machine. And then what am I selling them for? Which is how much money? $1.30, right? So this is, I'm not selling something nice. I'm selling something cheap. I make it cheap and I sell it cheap. But I do have to recoup the cost of the $1,400, whatever the gizmo is that's making the thing I'm selling. Okay, so let's set it up again. When do I break even? Well, it's when cost equals revenue. 
Uh, you did 1.3 equals? Yeah. That's fine. You'll get the same answer. It'll turn out all right in the end. So what do I do here? Minus yep, minus 0.3x. That's a good idea. You guys are so smart. So on the left side, the x's are gone. And on the right side, 1.3 minus 0.3 is 1, or 1x. Man, it doesn't get any easier than that. The answer is 1,400. How many, uh, how many widgets do you have to sell? i got to sell 1,400 of them. Now, when you step back and think about it, of course the answer is 1,400. I was selling them for $1.30. They cost 30 cents, so I was making a dollar on each one. If I make a dollar on each one, how many do I have to sell before I get my $1,400 I spent on the machine back? 1,400 of them. Makes sense when you step back and look at it. Okay. You doing well so far? No questions yet? Okay, let's take those and turn that into a word problem. So, this is a company that manufactures gift boxes. They purchase $1,000 of equipment in order to make the boxes. The cost of actually producing them is 50 cents and we sell it for three bucks. Now this is just like the last two problems, the cost revenue function, only difference is you gotta write them this time. So let's talk about cost. What would my cost function be? Fifty cents per item, so I make fifty cents on each item. But also had to buy the equipment, right? So plus a thousand. What's my revenue function? How much do I make off each one of these things? Three per item. So I'm making two dollars and fifty cents profit off each item. Right? If I sell it for three bucks and I make it for 50 cents, I make 250 per item. That's pretty good. How many of those items am I going to have to sell to make back the thousand dollars I spent on the machinery? So let's do it. 3x equals 0.5x plus a thousand. All right, we'll subtract 0.5 on both sides. Good. So 2.5x equals 1,000. Division. Division. You may need a calculator for this one. Dividing by decimals is not the easiest thing in the world. What's 1,000 divided by 2.5? 400. You are so good. So how many of these uh, packages do they have to sell before they make their money back? 400 of them. After 400, they become profitable. Sometimes you hear people use that phrase on uh, what is maybe the greatest reality show on television, Shark Tank. How long will it take for your company to become profitable? Meaning how long will it take before you make back the startup cost of your business? Bigger companies, it takes forever. Like Amazon, for example, took years before Amazon was profitable. Seems like it worked out okay for them in the end. I think Amazon's doing okay. All right. Let's do just a couple of these because these take a long time. A system of three linear equations. So um, this equation right here on A is introducing you to your very first quadratic. That is a big, big chunk of the next semester of this class, but uh, we don't get too, too deep into quadratics in this one. But anytime you see x squared, that's a quadratic. So ordered pairs are x's and y's. So like negative 3, negative 37, that's an xy. Negative 2, negative 22, that's an xy, and 1, negative 1, that's an xy. 
So what I'm going to do is take this equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and I'm going to replace the x's with the x-coordinate and the y's with the y-coordinate. So, for example, the first one I'll do y equals ax squared. I'm going to replace the x with negative 3. So negative 3 squared is 9, so a times 9, or 9a. And then b times x, b times negative 3 is negative 3x, plus c, and, oh, sorry, c, c, and, oh man, I'm dumb, I forgot to replace the y, the y was negative 37. Don't do your math and pen, kids. You know what, that looks terrible, let's start over. Forgot to replace the Y and none of you stopped me. Sure. <laughs> when you think about it, we're all we're all responsible for this disaster. It's mostly mostly all of you, but I'll accept like 10% of the responsibility. Okay, let's do the next one. So the Y is negative 22, not gonna, gonna forget this time. Y equals, and then the X is negative two. So we start off with AX squared. X squared would be four. Negative two times negative two is positive four. So this would be four A. Um, B times X, uh, the X is negative two. So negative two B plus C. And then here's the last one. The Y is negative one. The X is really easy. It's one. So one squared is one plus B times one plus C. And there's my three equations. Okay. Started off a little rough there, but we, we recovered. Now my goal in a three variable system is to eliminate one of the variables. I see one kind of obvious one. Which one of these variables is kind of going to be easy to eliminate? Following. Which variable, A, B, or C? Yeah, C is really easy. Let's just take the first two. I can't eliminate them right now because they're both positive. I need one positive and one negative. How am I going to make them negative? Yeah, I'm gonna mul let's just do the bottom one. Let's multiply everything on the bottom by negative one or divide by negative one if you like. I'm not even gonna rewrite it because all that does is change the signs. Positive 22, negative 4a, positive 2b, negative c. That's what happens when you multiply by a negative. You just change the signs on everything. So when I add them, negative 37 plus 22 is negative 15. 9 minus 4a is 5a. Negative 3b plus 2b is minus b, and the c's are gone. There we go. I got an equation that has only a and b in it. Guess what? I'm going to do the exact same thing with two different equations. How about the bottom two? Because those also both have a positive c, which means I can use the exact same technique here to get rid of the c. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to multiply everything on the bottom by negative 1. So that'll give me a positive 1, negative A, negative B, negative C. And when I add them, I get a negative 21, positive 3A, minus 3B, and the C's are gone. So that took me a little bit of work, but after doing that little bit of work, I have now created two equations that each only have A and B. So I'm going to stack these two. So negative 15 equals 5 
a minus b. And on the bottom, negative 21 equals 3a minus 3b. Nothing really obvious is going to eliminate there, I'm sorry to say, but at least I'm down to just two variables, so that's good. Ooh, what do I do? I don't know what that means. There aren't any denominators. One to be negative, one to be yeah, I need, not only do I need one to be negative, one to be positive, but I need them to be the same number. So like the easy one I think is the B's, right? Yeah. If I just multiply the top by what? Positive. If I multiply by positive three, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to change the signs also. So the top one is gonna be positive 45, negative 15A, positive 3B and the bottom unchanged. And now I'm gonna add those two together to eliminate the Bs. Now we have done a lot of work to get to this point, a lot of work, but after I divide both sides by negative 12, I will be left with a equals negative 2. And I'm sure you know by now that in these systems of three equations, once you know one of them, you're home for it. You got it. So for example, if I know a and I want to figure out b, I'm just going to take one of these two equations that I just used, one of these two, and I'm going to substitute the a in. Um, let's see, which one's going to be easier? I think probably the negative 15, just because the number's a little smaller. That seem all right? Let's come down and do it here. So negative 15 equals 5 times A, which is negative 2, minus B. And that's pretty simple. Negative 15 equals negative 10 minus b. I'm going to add 10 to both sides. So I get negative 5 equals negative b. So positive b is positive 5. I'm close, I have A and B, I just need C. Any of the original three equations are good. I'm gonna use the bottom one because look how simple it is. Negative one equals A plus B plus C. I'm gonna use that one just because it's easiest. So negative one equals A plus B plus C. That's really easy. Negative two plus five is three. And then subtract 3 on both sides. So negative 4 equals C. Oops. So I now know A, B, and C. The question was, what are the values of A, B, and C? I'm just going to write them in order. A is negative 2, B is 5, C is negative 4. Like that. Okay. All right, let's do the last one. Put your economics to the test on this one. A store is selling tents, sleeping bags, and camp stools. Oop, I made a typo. I wrote camps stools. Camp stools.
read the rest of the problem and then tell me what is it that I want to know about tents, sleeping bags, and camps, stools. What's the last line say? Yeah, that's what I want to know. What's the cost of each item? And I've got three items, tents, sleeping bags, and camps stools. So I'm going to need one variable for each of those. It doesn't matter what you call them. I'm going to say x is going to be the cost of the tent. y is going to be the cost of the sleeping bag. And z is going to be the cost of the stools the camps stools. Cool. So um, let's start off with the first thing. A customer buys a tent, two sleeping bags, and five stools, and it costs him $138. Why would you need two sleeping bags and five stools? It's a question for another time. So how do I write an equation that says that? Well, if he buys a tent, how much does he spend? If he it says he buys a tent, how much did he spend on the tent? He spent X dollars, right? That's the cost of a tent. Plus, he got two sleeping bags. How much do two sleeping bags cost? Yeah, it's two times however much a sleeping bag costs. And he also bought five stools. Plus five Z. And his total was $138. Good job, champ. So five people are going to share two sleeping bags. Oh, well. Here we go. The price of a tent is... Oh, let's stop right there. The price of a tent is... X equals... Tent is... Is means equals... Nine times the price of a stool. Nine Z. Good. And then the last sentence, the cost of a sleeping bag is y is thirteen dollars more than or plus thirteen doesn't matter a camp stool. There are our three equations. Now I know what you're thinking. If the guy bought this stuff, couldn't he just look at the price tag on the item? And the answer is no, then there would be no reason for us to do algebra. Use your heads, people. So, if everybody just looked at the price of things, why would we need to do this problem? Don't ask crazy questions. So what do I do? Here's what I notice. I notice that I'm given enough information to replace x's with z's, and I'm given enough information to replace y's with z's. Which means in the first equation, I could replace the x with z, I could replace the y with z's, this would already be z's, and I could make the first equation nothing but z's. I like that idea. So I'm going to take this first equation and I'm going to replace everything. So instead of x plus, I'm going to do 9z plus. Instead of 2 times y, I'm going to do 2 times what y is, z plus 13, plus 5z. Now this is beautiful, because we took an equation that had three variables in it, x, y, and z, and in one step we wrote an equation that only has z's in it. That's awesome. A little bit of algebra here, but that's not a big deal. Let's go ahead and distribute. 2 times z and 2 times 13 plus 5z equals 138. Now we're kind of home free, right? Sure. Hmm? Uh, yeah, let's combine the z's. That seems like a good idea. How do we do that? Okay, so what do we get? 9 plus 2 plus 5. 
Good. I heard somebody whisper it. 16. <laughs> Confidence. Don't whisper it. Shout it. Shout it so loud that the person next to you changes seats. Then what? Uh, get rid of the whole number. Yep, let's subtract 26. So 16z equals 112. Then what? Divide by? Good. What's 112 divided by 16? Seven, good. Okay, so Z is seven. What does that tell us? Uh huh. <laughs> Great. In this problem, what was Z? Remember, Z was going to give us the answer Q. The stools. So the stools are seven dollars each. Now I got to go figure out the tent and the sleeping bag, but that's really easy. I was told that the sleeping bag was thirteen dollars more than the stool. So how much is a sleeping bag? It's 20 bucks. I was also told how much a tent cost. A, a tent cost the same as nine stools. So X equals nine times Z. So if I was going to write this as a coordinate, it would be 63, 20, and 7. But if I was going to write this in English, I would say $63 for a tent. $20 for a sleeping bag. And $7 for a camp stool. When it comes to solving systems of equations, I kind of like the word problems better because it's easier for me to think through, does this answer make sense? Like if I'd done this problem and I got a negative, I think I would know that I've made a mistake somewhere because you can't have a negative amount for a tent unless you're like one of those extreme couponers that like they pay you money to take food out of the grocery store. But otherwise, not going to be a negative amount. Does anybody have any questions about these? It does seem pretty straightforward. <laughs>